as compared to, to last year, I guess, where I'd first like to see is kind of a baseline of how, the, the, how you would approach the track differently with the, the R18 e-tron versus the R18 last year. They look a lot the same, but they're very different. Yeah, but um, actually it's very different, but not due to this uh, hybrid technology only. The car improved quite a lot from the talking about suspension, talking about the handling of the car. And that's what uh, make uh, our um, approach a little bit uh, different compared to last year. We were lacking in um, rear, uh, uh, I would say, stability last year. It was not easy to um, uh, to fix the rear balance of the car, which was the weakest uh, area for us. Actually, we had just a very little uh, working window where the, the car was uh, really uh, nice to drive, but out of that the little window was quite complicated and uh, the car sometimes get a little bit unpredictable. Um, but after that, during the winter, we get a lot of new stuff in the car and uh, even though the car looks similar from last year, which is similar, but uh, so many little parts and not only little parts change, which make the drivability of the car much, much better and the weakest part of the car suddenly get uh, at the moment one of the strongest parts. And uh, now we all drive uh, like the rear stability of the car, the aero, from the aero point of view, as well, we make a very a big step forward. The car, hero wise, is really, really well balanced. And uh, yeah, that if we add the hybrid technology to that, that for sure we have to change our uh, approach to on, on this racetrack, and not only on this racetrack in general, I would say. So with the with the new balance, the new dynamics of the car, you can really attack the course. How do you how do you approach things differently when you're now thinking of recapturing uh, the energy? Yeah, uh, that is the area where uh, really we feel uh, a big difference compared to last year. Actually, uh, there is a, a feeling when you brake or you back off the throttle, a kind of uh, friction which is the recuperation of the power which you have to get used to it is a, a tool which you can use to drive the car in some area can be also a tool which can uh, slow you down a little bit too much you have really to get used to it to to get the best out of it because uh, as I said is a tool which can bring you an advantage but if you use it in the wrong way it can also bring uh, a disadvantage that's uh, it's where uh, I think we have uh, really to understand compared to last year the area where we have to understand how really to, to drive this uh, hybrid technology but uh, it's not easy and uh, even though we have done quite a lot of um, mileage sometimes you feel that you still uh, are in a learning uh, process. Do you think you'll still be in a learning process after 24 hours? I think uh, during our stint, in the during the race, I think could be also a, to increase or to improve our uh, or to yeah, to extend our learning process because I'm quite sure that in dif in different uh, area of the race or moment of the race we can learn uh, something even uh, even during the race uh, how to use this uh, this technology that's I'm quite sure about that because you know test we test quite a lot but as I said because it's a brand new technology is never enough I think more you test and more you more you learn and the race I think also will be a, an area a, or a, a part of our learning process. How important is communication with uh, with your co-drivers or with the other Etron team as, as you go out on the course and you figure something out with, with a car or Tom does or Alan does? Yeah, uh, communication between drivers is always very important because you know even uh, during the race something can change in behavior of the car because you know you start uh, uh, 
you start the race in uh, and the track is in, in a certain condition which change completely after a few hours because then when 50 cars 60 cars on the track start to to run all together for hours without stop and uh, you know you try to you start to get a lot of rubber on the on the line the grip level change and therefore also the behavior of the car change and that's therefore it's so important to have a communication with your teammate especially the one who is in the car uh, and he can give to the engineer and the, and the, and then to us uh, as a, I would say driver who will be after him in the car some good uh, feedback which we can use it immediately from the beginning because sometimes if you have no information it's so easy to lose time at the beginning of your uh, stint because what you have in your mind is the last time uh, the, the, the behavior of the car the last time you, you, you drove the car which in the case of the race could be the warm-up which is normally one or two laps early in the morning in cold condition and uh, or two days before which is Thursday night when for the last time you drove the car before uh, before the, the start of the race and then the feeling you have in your mind the feeling from two days before the race and then you know the driver who start the race can give you a lot of good feedback to accelerate your um, your uh, also your learning process during the race because if you say listen there is much more grip compared to Thursday night you can break much later you can carry more speed through the corner the traction is better you know that uh, you can push straight away from the outlet if you don't have this kind of information sometimes you are too careful at the beginning of the stint and it's so easy to lose uh, uh, seconds which you know you don't want to lose so how does that work when you come in there's no time to stand around and have a coffee by the car and let, you know and tell Alan or Tom they're getting in next you, you, you come in you tell them immediately the engineers radio no 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 you tell the the info for your teammates are coming from uh, the driver who is in the car during the during the stint uh, in any moment of the stint or just a few laps before the end of the stint before the driver change he start to if I'm in the car and I know that Alan is after me or Tom is after me I will say uh, information for Alan or to my engineer I will say uh, tell Alan that in corner um, in the fourth chicane grip is much higher than it was or is more sleepy because uh, uh, GT car cut too much take grass or um, dirt into the line tell him to be careful in that area because it's much more sleepy compared it was and all this kind of information which can help a lot your teammate to speed up immediately and avoid uh, mistake as well um, or taking a risk in, in uh, some area where normally uh, there is no risk at all. Speaking of conditions, it, it certainly looks like it's going to be a wet week. We'll see how whether there's rain during the race or not. But um, certain cars, like look at the Delta Wing with their tire design, looks like they may have an advantage when it gets wet for them, you know, for whomever they're competing with. But how much of an advantage do you think the Eastern Quattro's will have in the wet? For sure, we have some some um, advantage. The problem is that, the, you, as you know, we get uh, this um, extra boost over uh, 120. And you know, this is an area where the traction is already quite good. And you already over this uh, critical area, which is, I don't know, between 70 km per hour and 120, where normally you have a lack of traction because the the power you have on the rear uh, axle. And, uh, but for sure, uh, out of uh, corner like Arnage or Mulsan, this uh, Itron Quattro would be clearly an, uh, an advantage for a little bit accelerating out of uh, this uh, very slow corner. For sure, uh, would be nice to have uh, to have it a, a, a lower uh, speed. Then really, you could use the the advantage of the Quattro much much better. You had some experience that with the Quattro car days. Yes, with the Quattro and then losing the Quattro. Yeah, for sure. Quattro is, if I go back to my uh, touring car, uh, uh, 
era, <laughs> I would say, in terms of balance of the car, that was by far the best car I ever driven because it was just uh, perfectly balanced. You have a lot of traction. You can really throw the car in the corner, get traction every time, everywhere. It was just fantastic, and uh, you know, is uh, something I really missed because. Uh, that was really what you say use 100% of the potential of the car and with the Audi Quattro it was possible to use really to squeeze every little thing from the, from the car due to the Quattro uh, at the mo now you know with a lot of power on the rear axle for sure you have to fight with traction and uh, that's the area when I accelerate out of, of slow corner that's the area or when we are on wet, that's the area where really I miss, I miss the quarter a lot. But I don't miss it when I drive my uh, road car because my road car is Quattro and I can still enjoy the, 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 the technology, the great Quattro technology Audi provides to a road car as well. Now I have a A6 Avant 3 liter, a double, a, the twin turbo diesel, which is, I have to say, one of the most beautiful car I driven in the last uh, few years because it, despite the the size of the A6 due to this uh, ultra uh, technology the car is so agile and the power is just unbelievable because if you think that we have over 310 horsepower on the 3 liter diesel road car that is really really amazing plus the sound of the V8 uh, petrol engine on the on a diesel engine is uh, is fantastic. I had a chance to drive one of the It's amazing. I really I like this car. I drove uh, also the, the, the normal uh, 245 horsepower and I was already impressed about the behavior of the car, which is fanta really fantastic. I think the handling is uh, unbelievable despite the size of the car. You, you've had a chance to play with the Toyotas a bit during the test? Uh, unfortunately not me. No? I, but some of my colleagues had the chance to, to drive close to the Toyota and um, it seems they are really impressive impressing about acceleration due to the different system they have they have uh, traction only on the rear axle therefore they can uh, uh, release the extra power the extra boost already from from zero i would say and uh, taking an uh, advantage immediately and the uh, exit of the corner without waiting 120 uh, and i didn't drive with them but i heard from my colleagues that the, the first uh, 50 100 meter uh, they are quite quite fast but you know i i still think that our choice is the best choice because with such a big power only on the rear axle i don't think you can uh, i think you can get problem with the rear tire quite soon or sooner than us and that's what we will see in the race it seemed like last year tires made all the difference so sorry tires made all the difference last year so, so yeah, a tire uh, last year we showed that we could do five stint with the tire. We will see. That we still didn't get any. We have a lot of ideas. We we don't we didn't take at the moment any decision. Someone uh, thinks that the very long stints. A uh, number of stints is uh, the best way. Some others think that the shorter but faster stint is the better way. We will see. Uh, for sure, I'm not a good friend of uh, these many, many stints. I'm talking about uh, from the driver point of view, because longer you stay in the car, easier is. It gets easier to make some stupid mistake, you lose a little bit of concentration and if you stay very long on the same set of tire, it can also get easier to, to, to get a slow puncture or uh, some, uh, some issue, which would be nice not to have it. <laughs> Well, I hope you know, and I wish you luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. I need it. <laughs> uh, no.